everyone complaining about why Denver and Miami is going to be a you know a boring finals matchup and the ratings are going to be bad and they're not big enough markets. To me, I think it's pretty ironic that the Nuggets waxing the Lakers so swiftly and like being so obviously the Titanic favorite and being like clearly the best team in the Western Conference from start to finish this year. Like it kind of had an inverse effect of the Nuggets hype train being that like, if it was a dramatic game seven where Jokic is doing this and doing that every single night for two weeks with the back against the wall and blah, blah, blah. Like maybe like the compelling nature of their march to the title would have had more time for people to get on the bandwagon. But like, they've been so good and so dominant. Like it's been happening in the blink of an eye. All of a sudden they're in the finals and they haven't had a chance for all these people to jump on board. Like, you see what I'm saying? I feel like it's kind of like a catch-22 where people are saying like, oh, they're like, no one knows anything about them. Like, they're not nearly as exciting as the Lakers because they just beat the Lakers so quickly. We, like, the casuals didn't have time to learn that the Nuggets are this good. Well, the good news about that is that we've got a couple of weeks to reheat the stories that you and I have been writing all season about the Nuggets and to make sure that everybody's aware of what led them to this point I think it's funny to say like they just haven't had enough time for everybody to get to know them because they waxed the Wolves they beat like rookie or you know number one star rookie kind of guy Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns they waxed them they just you know they took apart the Suns with Devin Booker and Kevin Durant and they annihilated the Lakers with LeBron James and Anthony Davis they've beaten an all NBA team to get to this point and we're like ah but we just There's just not really much to hang your hat on. Not about the two-time MVP who was like a chubby kid that drank three liters of Coke a a day and was introduced to the league. That's not a joke. That's not not a joke. joke. That's a legit. That That is what happened. Yeah. He was a fat little kid who drank way too much soda. That is like what and was introduced to the NBA through a Taco Bell commercial. What can America latch onto more readily than a fat kid who eat, who drinks too much soda and eats too much Taco Bell? And this is the guy who went, who's now at the, in the finals. Like the the Jamal Murray story of like he got to you know was about to you know sort of reach a new level and laid low by an injury has the grueling comeback the you know like training montage to get back to it. And then aces the fi- the Western Conference Finals, 32 points a game on 50, 40, 90 shooting. Like, there's something to latch onto there. Michael Porter Jr., back injuries, multiple surgeries, goes from number one prospect to, like, can't get back on the floor. And is he ever going to be able to be doing it? And now his coach didn't trust him because he couldn't play defense. Now he's doing it and willing to sacrifice for the good of the team. All these things. Like, there's plenty of stories. And I look forward to us telling them and other people in our positions telling them rather than complaining that there's not enough to talk about. There's plenty to talk about. You just got to do it well. 